Hi everybody and welcome to the leaf class. The don't leave me hanging, the leaf paper edition, the I have 56 of these leaves to finish and I am terrified video on how to finish a leaf shaped ornament. Well, sort of. <laughs> So I have had this request from multiple people as well as multiple shops to make a video about how to finish these lovely leaves for the wreath that is in the Needlepoint Now um, magazine. They also have a version, they have uh, finishing instructions of their own as well as um, a video that has been put out. Uh, you can find those on the Needlepoint Now website and I think it's under projects. Uh, but I, I'm not going to uh, be following their instructions. And I've made a few additions to um, it, which I hinted at with a little mini video of uh, using wire. And uh, this is optional. Uh, there's, and we'll cover that a little more down the road. I still would use a little bit, oh, we'll get there, we'll get there, I'm jumping ahead. Okay, so things that we need. We need scissors, we need backing fabric. This is a interfacing that is not the heavy interfacing that I use on everything else. I will be uh, posting a, putting together a list of all of the supplies that I use today. And uh, of course a curved needle and a fishing line if you're choosing to sew the entire thing. I will be showing you two versions of how to do this. And then there will be a portion of this dedicated to how I think it will be put together on a wreath form or what I think would be the easiest way to do it. That's kind of um, going to be you and I figuring it out together moment. I would... these. I know you guys are afraid of these because there's so many to do. And I'm going to present you with two options and to the degree that you use it, just take the best parts of it, what works for you, and go for it. Um, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by this project. You should definitely um, try to finish them as you do them. I am offering some shaped ornament classes around the country this year. If you um, are intimidated by it, you are more than welcome to contact me and I'll try to answer any questions that you can. You can uh, email me with your questions, but I just really want to reassure you that you can do this. It's not as terrifying as you might think. I'm going to present you with a couple of options. Uh, for trim and all right so let's just dig in and do this i'm going to do two at once uh because well why not you'll just get double the information as i do this so i i have one already prepped and here's the leaf that i showed in the little video and of oh look how bendy i am well it wasn't as bendy as I liked. So I went back and I actually had looked for this other uh, interfacing when I originally went to, to do this. And that interfacing, okay, is this thick. And it's, it's quite rigid. And there's two pieces of it in here because you need to fill the void, which you'll see, um, in this top leaf. And this 
I'm not using this heavy of a wire. I mean, there's all kinds of changes that I made since I did this. I just did this um, leaf. Uh, so my friend Diane Shearer, uh, she stitched these up. And she's a speed demon. She stitches all the time. And so she had like seven of them a couple months ago when I made this that she sent me. So here we go. Here's the difference between what I did with the original interfacing, this thick, right? Okay, see if we can get a good profile. Then this one, which actually looks a, kind of a little thicker um, from its profile because of the trim that I used. Um, I was trying to find you a flat trim. It's just a little mini grain ribbon that I have put on here and that you can find at Joann's. I couldn't find any of this grain really thin like this uh, at Hobby Lobby. There might be some at Michael's. I'll be going back there to check it out, okay? Uh, so I can give you some more resources, but we'll talk about the trim later. So this one is kind of not as thick okay I've used a thinner wire in it and so we have a little more ability to bend and twist and not have um, the resistance of the interfacing okay so I just think it'll it'll give you much nicer uh, options because you have to use the heavier wire using the heavier interfacing. And here is the difference. This is the one that I have um, always used on my eyeglass cases and everything else. But can you see how skinny this is? I mean, that is a very thin profile. This is mm, a mil and this is maybe two millimeters. Maybe, maybe. That's, I think that's stretching it. And this is a sixteenth. So I think you can just tell the difference in that this one really doesn't have much of a defined edge where this gives you quite a flat edge and creates this thicker profile. So even though they have a similar whoops, thickness, this one bends much easier and is going to allow you to maximize and not have to use industrial strength um, wire because this is basically the previous one that I was using I think this is 18 gauge and this is 20 gauge. Higher the number, the smaller, thinner it is. Same with uh, needles and regular, any kind of wire. Uh, so here we go. Let's just jump in. Let me move all of this stuff out of the way and we will get going. Uh, we are like I said, going to do a couple of these at the same time. If anybody has, if you've watched my videos before, uh, you know I use lots of different tools which <coughs> make my life much easier. And if uh, you've taken my in-person classes and you have had access to all of the sundry of tools that I use, you know exactly why I use them uh, because it is a fabulous thing. So this had like five pieces on it. I've already blocked this. Block it, block it, block it. You're resetting the sizing in this. Even if you did it on a frame, it needs to be blocked. It resets the sizing and it gives you a firm reset piece to work with to handle. It is important. 
I am going to give you a little trick to use. Um, I call it finger blocking, but you cannot use it on things that were not on a uh, stitched on a frame because those shift much more. And um, they will just lay this, even your stitches lay much flatter. So I want you to get into the practice of blocking them, especially if you did like Diane did where she did seven or five of them on one piece of canvas that was a little bigger because now you've gone in and out in different places and the needle going in and out of the holes, it makes a difference. Every time you touch it, every time you're handling it, the needle going in and out, it really does give it a shift. And you might go, I don't see it. Just try it and you'll see that after you block it and you reset the sizing, huge difference. Okay, so here we go. Enough about that. All right, so I want you to give me, cut out around it, a solid half of an inch, okay? Even around the point. I know, I know, that one's a little thinner, I know. All right, let me pull this out a little. Okay, gotta make sure you're still in focus. Okay, so here we go. So these are my nip scissors. Love them, love them, love them, because I'm gonna show you the difference, why I use them. If you're using here the long scissor, you gotta cut like this, then like this, then like this. So it's a really long profile and you just don't have the control over the scissors that you need. And your arm gets tired. And after 56 of these things, mm, I think you'll love them. Give them a shot. Joanne's look on, and um, I'm going to make sure to put the list on my webpage and a link. Okay, here we go. You ready? We're going right up to that stitch, the very last stitch. If you cut the last stitch, your piece isn't going to unravel. You'll be fine. It's fine. You've now taken a woven piece of canvas and stitched over it, making it an even tighter weave. And you will not, it's not just going to, it's not like a sweater that's just going to go and start to unravel like you see in the cartoons, exposing some little, yeah, naked skinned cat or something. We've seen it on Tom and Jerry, you know you have. I think every version of cartoon has, a, has it in it. All right, so now we're going to cut out little pizza pies. Okay, now I want you to hear about a quarter of an inch. When you're doing a curve, more darts is better than less darts to get a nice smooth curve. Okay, about a quarter of an inch, chunk, chunk. I like to keep my thumb very close to where I'm nipping because I have more control over the piece. That one didn't want to let go because I didn't cut it all the way. See that little notch in? You wouldn't think that makes much of a difference. I want a point of a dart hitting that area because that is going to be a point, all of these along this curve, when we turn them under, it's important to have the ability for this canvas to flex. Okay. 
Okay. Just got to make sure I can. Okay. So the tip, I'm going right up to those last two stitches. And I'm going to cut there. We're going to jump over this spot. And I want you to come in and cut there. And then keep going. I don't want you doing long angles like this. I want you to do deep. See, this is where I got a little close to the edge when I was doing my heavy half around. For me, I do this all the time, and so I tend to do a little less, but for you, I want you to be generous. So when we're turning it over and fastening it down to the interfacing on the back side, that you have a little more canvas to work with than less, and it'll become obvious why in a few minutes. Okay, so none of these are big chunks. If you're working on a big pillow, then take out big chunks. Tiny pieces require tiny darts. And why do we take out darts? Well, if we just use flat edges, squares straight out, if you just came in and went chunk, 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 okay, I'll, I'm going to do it. What happens when you turn it over is all of these have to fold in on each other like this, okay? And all of the overlap that happens creates bulk. And on a pointy shape, that's really hard to deal with. And the way I do any kind of a shape, my circles, any of that, I am wrapping it around so I don't see any canvas on the front. I don't want to see that from the front. Okay, when I say that, you don't want to see white. You're going to take that edge of the stitch over. Okay, you're not losing stitches. And even if you are losing a few stitches on this piece, that's okay. You don't have a serious border that you're working with. And even if you do have a bit of a border on it, you still want enough to pull around the edge. Okay. All right. So now we have two little stitched. What's the difference? Oh, that's right. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to cut straight down. Why is that? And I'm going to take my heavy doll needle and I'm going to pull all of this chaff out of here, the little schniblet bits that stick to my slippers. And when I go to stay at my lovely friend Robin's house, I brought my schniblets stuck to my slippers. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they wouldn't come out. They're embedded. Okay? And why are we doing this? Because we don't want the end of this to be so thick when we turn it over that I need to put another notch in there. And why is that? Because of the point. And you'll see why. I'm going to chop this off a little. Okay, you can see here, to fold these under, you really can't have these big wide pieces up here in this point. Okay, because otherwise, see this? You'll see why right here. What happens? It sticks out the other side and then it makes bulk. That's not good. Points and bulk, not good. Because then you have to have thicker cording to hide your sin 
of the white waste canvas. But watch, this is going to come, that little bit right there is going to come out. And look at this. Look at this. It's not unraveling. And why is that? It's not unraveling because look at the weave in that. This one won't, didn't unravel at all. Okay? Don't worry about it. We got you. Okay, so we have our pointy bit prepped. And we can cut a little of those bits off there. All right. Turn my iron on. Move a few of these things out of the way because I have to bring my little press board up here. We've got to do a little ironing work. So here's my little mini board. All right. And while my uh, iron heats up, we're going to finger press all of these over. Okay, and as I finger press, I'm trying to get all of the blue-green marker that um, they instruct you to use in uh, the directions. I'm going to take a moment and caution you on them. Uh, This particular marker is obviously quite blue compared to this fiber. Maybe you can't see it as well. And plus my camera doesn't autofocus because otherwise it's like make you nauseous between how I hold my hands. So um, we don't need to worry about a white stitch that we're going to see. I know that this is from her just tracing around the template. Um, but we're going to push those behind, okay? And you have to be really careful about your stitches on the edge because, or how you stitch them along the edge, uh, because sometimes when you roll long stitches over, they can get a little weird and make a big boop out. So we just push, 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 so that you can literally see, and you'll see it better in a minute. It's not the actual stitch that you're seeing turning around. Okay, let's get everybody pushed over. I don't need to worry about those. They're tiny and wonky, and we're trying to make these points as pointy as possible. Uh, yeah. But even when you put when you put cording on or trim on, that's going to look a little rounded no matter what you do. So you do the best to get your point across. <laughs> and uh, don't make it a huge concern. Okay? Again, turn Turning, finger pressing. I won't sing the song and date myself that talks about turning and seasons. And you're singing it, aren't you? So now that we have them kind of pressed around back, you're saying, well, Kelly, let's just keep going. No, no, no. No, we need to give them, we're going to steam these over. And why? I really want you guys, uh, I'll tell you in a second. Okay. So the one, we're going to. Get our iron to get a little steamy. Oof! And there goes the steam on the. I'm going to turn my steam down a little bit so I don't keep fogging the camera. But we pull. I can't. I got to do it. So we pull the iron into it. Do not 
press it down. We're not using the weight at all. I'm holding it up. Just get that steam on there, okay? Then finger press it down again and let it set and cool, all right? If you don't do this step, you won't get the actual shape of your leaf. Now you're saying, but I have a template and it says to do an eighth of an inch smaller than that template. Okay, here's the issue with that. Press, press, press. Cool, cool, cool. And it set that steam and that cooling resets the sizing. Okay? Okay. So here's the thing about getting your shape. If you don't do the shape of each leaf and you try to just use a generic template for every single one, some of the way, the way you stitch it can lead to heavier stitching on the back side. Trying to see if there's one over here that's a little less or a little more. Okay, so here's a good example. Here is one. This is the front, okay? But the back side is extremely thick. And how do I know this is the back side? Because it's a variegated, and how can you tell? Because there's little tails where she's come up and started and gone back through. So the profile on the front is very thin, the stitching is, but on the back side, it's quite thick. So all of that thickness on the back side takes up room. And so you've got to accommodate for the thickness that is on the back, okay? This one doesn't have is thick of stitching on the back. So you can see the white canvas right there, right? So this one will be thinner and will need a little bigger piece than this one that has a lot more stitching on the back. Um, or you have to turn a lot more stitching over on this one and you might see white edge on the really th the one that has the thick on the back it it won't fit around the same interior piece as this one okay it just i'm sorry i really wish that you could just cut all the templates and be good but the other issue is the template that you used was not, uh, to do these leaves were not, it wasn't symmetrical, perfectly symmetrical. And how can I see this? Because, oof, on every leaf, this side is smooth, but this one has a little indent here, right? So then you're using all of these different stitches. Fabulous, they look beautiful. But the issue with that is that now you have a variety of thicknesses. So you might have to make your interior smaller to accommodate the stitching. So you really want for best results to make each one the appropriate size okay so i'm pulling it over pulling it over not letting it sit on it with the weight of the iron we're just letting it steam and we're using our fingers to press it around while the sizing is all relaxed and loving this little steam bath like you know you go into a sauna i'm not a heat person so i don't do that but, oof, 
it relaxes your muscles makes you steam it out same thing with the sizing it loves it okay so now see how nice and tight we're getting that together lovely that one needs a little trim because it's going over i didn't pull all of the little fabric chaff uh chaff is a term that we use on the farm for all the little bits that fall out from the hay hay chaff okay same with fabric and this sometimes you hear me call them little schniblets of needlepoint canvas it is yet another word i have made up all right so now I'm going to hold that down with my finger. I am not holding this down as I'm steaming because I don't need to burn myself from steam. And neither do you. So don't do that. Let it come away. It's going to stay damp. You got a few seconds to work with it. Okay. And I'm just going to let it press and cool. <gasps> let it cool. All right. I'm going to look at it from this side and I'm going to look at, hey, is it still blocked? Do my stitches still look straight? Because I'm telling you, they love that steam so much. They might go, oh yeah, let's go back out of shape. Ooh, I love it when you steam me. No, this one's pretty good. So we're good to go. All right. Let's do this one. Ready? Here we go again. Pull it in. That is how you don't touch the edge. You just let it lay that over and steam it and get it to cool. Move on. Right? Not using any weight. You would think that with all of this steaming that I do finishing, I would have an absolutely fabulous complexion from it. Yeah, no. I let the steam be on that, not in my face. Okay, pulling it in, letting the iron take it in the direction. That's why I use the edge. Otherwise, I would use just a plain old steamer. To just, but I like to have it pull it over using that edge to tip it as it's doing it. And now pull that all around. I like to hold it like this as I'm turning it around. Why? Because I want to look at it and I don't want to see any white on that side okay no way now i would just like to say how kabam is that point now that's a point pointy point all right let's get that steamed down okay it's tough to do points with long stitches. It just is. So um, we do our best. I try not to pull and misshape them, but mm, sometimes they get a little weird at the end. All right, now we have one more ironing thing to do. And it's not really ironing, it's pressing. It's a very pressing matter. Yeah, I'm full of puns today. Now, here's our fabric. Let's talk fabric for a minute. Um, this is an ultra suede, and even though people aren't going to be touching it, uh, to be able to feel if it's going in the right direction from top to bottom, I will be making sure that the um, nap of the, the direction of, see how it's got a direction. 
I don't know about you, but my grandmother had a couch with directional fabric on it. And I used to sit and make it go all the wrong direction and draw in it. Make it fluff up and then make it lay down where I drew. Uh, and it's a pet peeve of mine, honestly, if you've seen my videos. Oh, look at the schniblets that are on the back side. Let's try to get that off. And try to keep the schniblets off of everything because you will press the uh, texture of your fabric of your blocking board right into this. Okay. And no, no, no steam. See, that's my no steam setting. And we're gonna set it down and we're just gonna let it press and move. And move. This makes the fabric have a little more, this is a Shape Flex Fusible Interfacing SF, I think 101, it's on your list. And I know, I'm sliding it back and forth. So now as we're lifting this off, give it a, let it have a second. See, you can kind of see along the edge. And just smooth with your hands. I let the iron sit on there a little bit longer than I should. And so what happens is, is when it gets really hot, it starts to lift back off again. So you want to just smooth it, and as it cools, have the fabric, uh, the fusible interfacing, press back down on it. You can heat this. If you decide you don't like this fabric, just heat it up and pull it off as you heat it and go across, and you can take it back off. I do that for things uh, like, for when I do like big stocking linings and I don't want to waste a huge piece that got left on a piece of uh, fabric that I might not use again uh, in that big of a piece. Yeah, I'm, I'm a saver. I try to be a saver. So, our fabric is ready. Ooh, sorry. Okay. Here we go. Next, what are we doing? We are getting our shape for our inside of our oop, interfacing. Um, now this is the previous piece that I used for this guy. Okay, and I thought, well, Maybe I can make a template, sort of, because this is where the wire comes in, is this next step. And let's see. See, this one, let me see, did I have it the wrong way? Well, that's pretty close, but not quite. Okay, let me put it over a little more. Okay. So just shows not everyone is, see, that's that shape. So it fit this one perfectly, not so much that one. So this is why to have um, a little variant in your, and give it a little more dimension in another way, this is why you want to do these things every once in a while. Okay, here we go. Mm, big piece of not so thick interfacing. I will say it is a little harder to um, handle this as far as when you're doing other things, but it's much better for being able to bend and twist and all of that good stuff. Okay. This technique is how I get the shape for any shaped ornament, this means um, the halo ornament, you know, ornaments that have a halo around them, or star shape, heart shape, anything. And yeah, 
use it on the foam core, anything. All right, so make everybody, make sure everybody looks great. Oh, we look great. So we're going to lay it face down, okay? This is especially for when you use foam core for shaped ornaments because of having to bevel. But just get in the habit of doing it this way, okay? So we do it face down. We get our mechanical pencil and we have just a tiny lead out. Doesn't need to be a lot, okay? We don't want to mark on our fabric and we kind of angle our pencil in because we don't want the thickness of this plastic to make the space wider and have it be a much bigger leaf because anytime you trace something like this it's going to be a pencil width bigger. Okay, so now we take off. We have to fit this inside. Okay. And that's what? Let me see. Hold on. Here, I tried to have everything close at hand, doesn't happen. So, a little less than an eighth, but not quite a sixteenth. And if you want to have a good measurement of it, you can mark off how far in you want it, like that, and just sit and make little tick marks as you go all the way around. But since we are gonna be putting a wire on the inside, if we're a little smaller, I don't care. This point, I don't care if it's there. It can be a nub. Why is that, Kelly? Wait, what? Yeah, there's so much waste canvas there, it doesn't need support, okay? And it's gonna have the interfacing and material on the back side to support the peak and the cording that goes around it or whatever kind of trim you decide to do because there's no rules on what we put on here. I know there's a lot of people that are very concerned. They don't want to do cording. Oh, cording, that's, you know, I got it twisted. And it might spring back and be spaghetti. And I just don't want to deal with that much cording. I can made this video with options so that we can talk about what options you have in a bit. Mm, long scissors for long cuts. Okay. And sorry. Cutting and you can't see it. So like I said, I don't mind that she knows if you um, go in a little bit more we got room to play it's okay because this leaf isn't getting if it was foam core that was going to give you that defined shape that'd be one thing but this is going on the inside so that this isn't a concave leaf. We want it to have a nice flat appearance. So we have to put something in this area, in this area, to fill the void of where the waste canvas is and to do another task. Okay, so this, I can see the pencil line is here. When you 
trace that on, do yourself a solid, and put an X on that side. So we traced it on like this, then put the X, then do your in, then do your cut. I'll show you, I'm doing it again in a minute, don't worry. So, what am I doing? I'm lifting what I just did to this, that's right. Why am I undoing what I just did? I wouldn't have a shape if I didn't do this. Well, Kelly, why didn't you just take a piece of tracing paper while it was flat and trace around it and make the line before it and then because this one that's really thick when it turns over, it gives you a more realistic shape. Even if I did it an eighth smaller, it wouldn't be right. And why do I know this? Because I have tried that trick so many times and ended up seeing white canvas on the front when I did my test turn. And I've kind of just don't trust it. And so this is how I get my shapes is by doing the steam over and calling it good. Okay. So feed that in. Lay all of your, to make sure that you're not going to have an issue that if this was too big, it wouldn't fit in under those darts that we've laid over. It would be all popped up and cupped like this. And like, yeah, no, I'm not fitting in there. Um, kind of like trying to put, <laughs> trying to make sure I word this in nice a nice manner as possible. When I try to put on a pair of jeans that I don't fit in anymore because I was maybe a little overindulgent during Christmas or just in life in general and it's like this test of can I fit in these jeans well can this template fit in this ornament it behind these darts it did we got plenty okay so we're gonna quickly do this one and then we're gonna step on to the white okay so here we go again reinforcing what we just learned ready Put it on like this, angling in a little, we go around, okay, X, maybe it's a good thing when I do two things because then I can explain one right after the other two versions. Okay, sketch, sketch, sketch. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to follow that little wonky bloop out there. You can bring it in a little more. Don't have to be too nuts about, oh, it's not following it exactly. And don't say, I don't want to hear, but I can't draw a straight line. Use the method of this. Do, do, do. Because watch. Tick. 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 Okay? Lots of ways you can accomplish the same thing. Sorry, I'm hitting the camera an awful lot today. Can you tell I haven't shot a video in a while? Okay, up a little, yeah, I think that's good. Uh, I'm coming a little in more in a little more on this one because we do have a really thick stitch on this. So I just want to afford that wire a little more room. If you decide to not take my advice and make up all the templates ahead of a, ahead of time, not templates, all the guts 
interfacing or if you decide to use uh, I don't know map board or something like that be ready to have to trim stuff off if you can't fit this within this okay just even if you gotta you know just trim some off with a pair of scissors be ready uh, because they just aren't all going to be the same they're just not all right so I can see that this spot could, has potential to give me a problem because I didn't get it pushed over as much as the rest. Okay, I can't see the back side of that stitch right there. We'll, we'll make it work. So just slide these open enough to slide this in. Come on, come on, come on. Actually, I might as well just open it up because I got to put the wire in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Oop. There he goes. And you can see I'm giving it a lot of room. You can see about an eighth all the way around it. That's great because then I know that when I pull it over like this, I am not going to see anything, any white waste canvas when I look at it from this side. That's the tell if it fits. Okay, so now that we have this, like this, all right, we have our wire. This wire comes in white. And green this one's from Hobby Lobby this one is from Joann's uh, they are both 18 inches long uh, this they are both 20 gauge right there uh, this one had a lot more in it you know what I think I'm fibbing let me look at my other pack here This might be 22. Hold on. Yep, 22. It's a 22 gauge wire. Okay. And like I said, this one has 70 pieces in it. And this one definitely does not have 70 pieces in it. Why did Joann's not put information on here I don't know they did have green at um, Hobby Lobby just letting you know okay but afterwards uh, and I would definitely use green because when we attach this you don't want to have to hide the um, the white that is the stem and I'd prefer if you didn't use markers to try to cover the white on the wire. And you definitely don't want to use them when... Sorry, I'm anti-marker. I'm a finisher. And you're t you take a huge risk when you use markers. So the way that... Um, each one of the wires that I'm using is just one of these chopped in half. You don't necessarily need to, you can get it into thirds if you're doing uh, the small leaf, but for these purposes, I just cut them in half. Okay, and how am I gonna get the shape for this? I'm gonna give myself a little bit of wire here. I'm gonna give myself an L shape down here. And we can do it on this side. All right. I'm just going to take this wire and bring it up here and get my curve on. And then I'm going to put my point there. Okay. Like so. All right. Do, 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 do. 
Now it needs to fit inside. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a little, little finger curve there that maybe it doesn't show when I, because when I'm just kind of laying it there, it's not really bending, bending. It's just kind of going, yeah, you want me to go that way, but mm, maybe not. So there's my point. Now, obviously, my little L here needs to be corrected. But we're going to do that more once I get it in there. Okay. So I can see I have way too much cutters. If you're using wire, you need to use this. If you do not want to use wire, you don't have to. It's fine. It's fine. I just think it will be a little easier for you to manipulate, uh, to attach. All right. And I'm going to just take this tip and turn it over. And why is that? I don't want the sharpness of the wire on the back side on the interior. So I just turned that over. Okay, I don't know if you can hear. Let me put it on that side. Can you see it? Okay, so that's just doubled back on itself with my little needle nose pliers. Okay, and we just Go. Open, 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 says me. Open, says me. And slide that in. And it's like, mm, you know, Kelly, uh, I don't know that I want to do that. I'm going to make you fuss with me a little bit before you seal me in the threads, the stitching, okay, Oop. so, okay, I have to put a couple more little cuts at the bottom. Why? Because I need to make sure that I can wrap that waste canvas around the bottom. Come on, you doll needle, stat. Okay, there. All right, there, there, there. Yep. See the thickness of the wire? There would be a little void in there. Okay. That's why we fill it with a piece of interfacing. All right. And here's how we get this to stay where we want it to. What we do now, and I teach this in my in-person class, is we do east and west. I'm putting a little schmear, okay? Smooth it back and forth. Put a little bit of glue in there and then spread it back and forth with the tip, all right? And then I only want you to put down three, okay? And you're pulling, I want you to pull that around, okay? Because I want that waste canvas. If you don't want cording, don't let the waste canvas be seen on the side. Okay? That's just how it is. Cording hides sins. Trim hides sins. If you don't get that waste canvas pulled all the way around and under, 
you're going to see the waste canvas. And trying to use a marker to cover up the, the white of the waste canvas will not hide it. You can tell that it's not a fiber on there. So while you might be able to have a little cheat here and there with something else, it's, it's not going to help you in the end. Okay, so we've secured this side so that wire doesn't want to fight us anymore. So that's good. So we're going to take this little bit of glue, smear, 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 back and forth. We're spreading it around like some lovely butter. Or creamy cheese. Can you tell I'm hungry? Jeez. All right. All righty. Yay, yay, yay. Now we just go around and do the rest. Okay. Under all, I'm making little tiny circles and just barely squeezing the trigger so that it's just a lovely little bit and I don't burn myself that way. Why do we smear? Because even though I have asbestos fingers, I don't want to burn myself. Now, if you're like, okay, I just, I'm not, I can't do hot glue. I'm afraid of hot glue. Well, one of your options is to do the lacing. Um, we're going to take all of this and to do a point, I put hot glue in there, right? Take your fingers and make a little V and push all of that together and compress. Okay, and I'm going to do a little more because I can see that these little top stringers of waste canvas have not V and pull and smush. Okay, it was so thin bit of glue, it's not hot anymore. So please, I, I understand. And I don't want you putting big dollops on there. They're not necessary and you will burn yourself. So if you accidentally squeeze a little too much glue on there, just take the tip and go back and forth and back and forth and smooth it out and thin it out, okay? Because don't touch it. It's hot. It's really hot, and especially when it's sitting like it is next to me, kind of waiting around for its moment in the sunshine. I do have another option for you, but it, it's just not as, um, I don't know how to say. It's not as sticky, and so it's not going to, uh, do what this can do. So right now, because I'm trying to get where this should be coming out of for a stem, I'm looking at it from the top, okay? And I'm kind of pinching all of this that it hasn't been glued yet down. All right, let's get some more of this down. Schmear, schmear, schmear. Okay. All right, that's good. Schmear, 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 schmear. Now, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, and because it's a wire, it's just going to bend where you want it. Oh, I'm happy either way. You just tell me which way you want to go. Unless you kink me too much and then I'll break off and be a jerk. And make you cry. Because it's happened. All right. Okay. So that's how I encapsulate the wire into the sides. 
is by wrapping this around and gluing it down. Uh, one of the other options that I thought of specifically for the back side, uh, which is the material is using um, the tape that you use to do um, scrapbooking. It's uh, acid free and it will, you can just put the tape down, right? And then turn everything over onto it. If one of the pieces won't stick down to it, you can put a little underneath that tab and then stick it down and it'll be it'll hold down long enough uh, for you to um, pin it together and the front and the back so this is definitely a good option to not dealing with hot glue it might be a little make life a little more difficult uh, tacky glue does not dry fast enough and that's why I use hot glue um, so yeah all right, so um, you know what, I'm just going to do it. This time I'm not going to be as slow as I was. Okay. Wire down. Bending, bending, following the outside line. Okay, make your point. Bending, 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 bending. I hope if you aren't using the wire that you have fast forwarded because I'm sure it is not what you want to do listening to me drone on about the wire. Twice, not just once, twice. Okay, we're gonna look at the front. Oop. Next time, see by the time you're done with 56 of these, you'll just be zippity doo -don. You'll remember to put all the little extra bits and get all the chaff off ahead of time so that it forms right perfectly and beautifully around your piece of wire, which I just didn't do because it's been at least a month since I made that little video, if not longer. Okay. Oop, and it popped out. See, this is why we got to tack it in. Okay, so you got your wire good to go. Let's... Yep. Boop. There. Schmear, 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 and press. Again, give it a beat one to make sure it's not hot now that hot glue is hitting the interfacing only it is not hitting the needle point please 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 stop with the glue hating this glue will not have animals trying to eat it. It is not keeping this together. It's solely giving us the opportunity to put all of this down. If you are a purist, I heartily appreciate it. But I have been using this and the Fabri-Tac glue for 20 plus years. And it is a fabulous thing. And the majority of people also, other finishers, use it as well. Okay. Mm -mm. Now, this wire 
is running me a little short of getting all the way back to the bottom. I'm not worried about it. Okay, just keep swimming. I should have given it a little less of a tail here because you really don't need a lot of wire out the end. And I kind of thought that this might happen just because this one did not have much left by the time I got it around. Okay, I know I'm just... Stop talking, Kelly, and get glowing. Schmear, schmear, schmear. As I'm pulling this on, I'm making sure to hold the wire back and against in the void. Why? Because I want that on that edge. Okay, be careful as you're doing this not to make this pop up too much by squeezing it and maneuvering it in places we don't want. Schmear, schmear, schmear on the interfacing. Okay, pulling it around, pulling it around. And what do I mean by pulling it around? Get that waste canvas. Pull, pull, pull. Um, if you've ever done a upholstery work. Put some glue up here on these waste canvas bits. Um, you basically do the same thing when you're upholstering something. You have one side that you put down first to pull against the other side to pull and leverage. Same thing I do with blocking. Okay. Let me come over here. Okay, so I just thought of something as I was uh, putting that glue in there. And I'm looking at my interfacing and thinking, you could quite literally make these into flower petals and put them around a, um, say, a wood placard that's round and have these leaves all or the petals all the way around the outside and if it was a little bit bigger like say a six inch plate it would look like a sunflower and you could paint the center wood piece um, a brown and put welcome or something like that on it um, there's so many things you can do with these um, stitches that you are putting onto these leaves or just this concept in general of these little independent pieces of needlepoint. Okay, still looks good. Didn't squeeze it over so much that it's being stupid. And with that being said about the um, sunflower petals, um, because you would have the wire in the edge and you could manipulate it. You could put a little piece of puff in here, then put the back fabric on it, and it would be, you know, like a little padded petal leaf. So give it even more dimension. One idea leads to another. Just not enough time to design all of the things that could be done with things like this. Okay. On to the backing. Woo! All right. So here's our interfacing again. All right. Now, same concept. Don't, again, going in, don't make it bigger. Give your pencil an angle so that it's under because if you use a thicker fabric, you don't want this backing piece to be way out beyond. 
okay, and x. Okay, everything else is the same. All right. I cut kind of to the inside of the pencil line because I know I get out a little bit and I don't want it to be too big. Okay. Now we only use one wire in this. We don't use two, so we're done with that. Alright, get rid of those. Okay, there's one. Now, why am I doing two? One is four. Come on. That's how we're going to attach the cording. Okay, that's how. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, that didn't help, did it? All right, here we go. So dry. Okay, everybody's good. So again, looking at which direction, you're like, Kelly, what does it matter? It doesn't. It's just me. I'm compulsive. I know. So this side's the up, so we go down. All right. X up. A lot of people ask me, what should I use for fabric? What dictates the fabric for me is the color. It's always the color. All right, so what did we do the last time when we were, right before we were going to dart? Heavy half an inch all the way around. Now, I advise this. This is the one time you'll hear me say this, okay? If you need to, you can outline. Just be careful because this... Um, do it very lightly. Don't press through because this um, ultra suede can potentially show an outline on this side, a pencil line, any press mark. So you could actually make an indent on the other side and it won't look right and you'll see a weird shine to it. And the reason I'm saying it's okay for you to do this is because in my class, sir, some people that have like a lot of arthritis in their hands, that's more progressive than mine, <laughs> can't hold this in place and they want to be able to do this, okay? To do the half inch and not have to hold that template, okay? Give yourself that nice half inch, okay? All right, now we hold it. And why? You'll see. No spoiler alert. Come on, you gotta watch. Okay. So what we do is we put three darts and you leave a good eighth of an inch. Do not cut all the way up to this interfacing. Okay, you see? like that. Fabric is much more forgiving about turning over. You have a little room to play because you don't have the hard edge of the needle point to have to wrap around the back side. 
So we're going to take out, we want three tabs there. Why do we want three tabs? We're only putting the middle one down. If we just did the middle one, when we go to fold it over, this huge piece of material would wrap over and it's very difficult to make additional darts afterwards. So just do your three, okay, which is one, two, three, four darts in. Turn it in your hand, okay. Now the reason we're doing east and west, then south, is because Sorry, I'm trying to be very good about that. That's four, okay? The reason why we're doing this is because then it will hold it securely and you can do the darts all the way around without it shifting in your hand and accidentally pulling the fabric one way or the other like it's already started to do with the way I traced it. Can you see that, that the tracing is shifted? So, okay. If this is too, this interfacing is rather, it feels thinner than the other one, feel free to lay it down and press it over so that you don't accidentally bend this, pop it up like this and make it like pop up like a bubble because you shifted it and pulled too hard against it because it's kind of it's malleable. We want it to be so we can make the nice bend in the leaves. So now we're going to do the exact same thing. Eighth of an inch away. Don't chop, chop, chop too close. Because what, I'll explain what happens if you do. All right, if you chop, chop, chop too close and they're right along this edge, when you fold it over on the front side, you will see your darts. You'll see these little slits and you don't want them. Okay? All right, so center and all around. Okay? Now you can just hit it. Go ahead, dart to your heart's content. By the end of your 56 ornaments, you are going to be a master darter. So I believe in the instructions for uh, that the magazine has put out, uh, they use a piece of felt. So you don't have to do this. Um, but this will give you a nicer, more refined edge. And ultimately, you may put these together and think, hmm, I don't think I need a cord. I don't think I need. But personally, I would put a cord or a piece of trim around the edge. And see, schmear, 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 schmear. That's what I was talking about. Spread it out. Um, I personally would do it um, because it gives you a finished edge. It just gives you a nicer look to the edge of your leaf. Oop. Oop. I took too long to turn it over. Okay. Come on. You see, I constantly rub my fingers to get the glue back off of it as I go. Okay. So if you have little pointy darts like this, see how it's kind of pointing out there? Take your glue gun. Put the tip against it carefully and reheat the glue that's underneath it and then press it down. Okay, it's just made a little boop 
right there where the dart goes in. Now we're going to come along up here. And we're going to put some stabilizing darts in just the same way we did with the east and west prior. Okay, there. Oop. And here. And we're going to put a little smear there, right? And press it over like so. All right. Again, with the fabric especially, more darts. The needlepoint has a form to it and is going to give you an edge. Okay? Line to follow. The fabric does not. So you're pulling it right against that interfacing so that has a nice line and a shape to it, okay? Now we're going to come in we don't want a lot of fabric in there it'll get too thick so pull this around like that okay now come around to the other side I'm sitting here going, why am I not seeing quite right? I don't have my extra set of glasses on. I wonder I'm having eye strain. Okay. Take that. It's better to put tiny bits of the glue on then to put a whole bunch on and, <clears throat> and burn yourself or to just have it get everywhere. You know, be conservative with it. You know, don't hurt yourself, right? We don't want that. And again, if you are utilizing the tape, you're going to run a row of tape and you're going to do it the exact same way I just did. You're going to put some tape there. Duh, duh, duh. Okay, secure, 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 secure. So that this material doesn't shift and you see little cut marks because your darts have gone beyond 
the edge. All right. I'm just going to goob that up. Give it a second because I don't want to burn myself. I'm going to lay that little bit over, right? Then same with this. Now you'd see I didn't squish it flat like that. I came in with a V and pressed it down, holding, pinching it like this because it forms that little V. All right. And then I'm going to hold this against it to reheat it a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of press it and pull it and smash it. Hey! Like that. Now, if you wanted to go crazy, you could have the exact, have the, a matching color of fabric to every leaf. Not crazy, but just meaning um, cohesiveness for each fiber color, but um, it's really hard to find some colors. It's, I mean, it's really hard. Okay, so now we lay it over and ooh, look at how lovely that is. No waste canvas, but you can see what I mean. Okay, that just because you don't see the waste canvas, um, it still might need some finishing touches to it. Okay, about don't put it too close to the edge because it'll squish out like jelly in a sandwich or like when you're eating an egg salad, put a little heat up here, a little tick of hot there. Okay, and you lay it down. This is your chance to shift. Get it all shifty shifted right now. All right, lay it down and flatten it, but I want you to go like this and flatten it with the needle point side down. And why is that? Because if something goes concave on this, I want it to be the back side where nobody's gonna see it, okay? I want the front side to be nice and super flat, okay? When we're using foam core, we can easily push these edges together, right? But right now, we did not put this glue that close to the edge. So if you decide you don't want cording on there, you're going to have to sew the edge. Um, you can come in with the Fabri-Tac and put a bead in between and put it there and hold a pin and press it together, okay? Um, I would just be concerned with I'd just be concerned with it. I, I want to see you secure it with some stitching. Um, I am showing you a way where you glue the cording on. I am. Because 56 of these, you're, I don't want you to get upset and not finish your wreath. Okay, so I'm giving you options. I am just saying that it would be better if it had a stitched edge. Um, and right now I can see that, see that little bit of fuzzy weirdness right there? Uh-huh, you know what that is? That's a dark point. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get that all the way around. Dag nabbit. Yep, like that. So that's another reason. I mean, it just, it, it hides all of your, your sins. Now, you could put a fun stitch. There's a blanket stitch. There's all kinds of stitches. You guys know the stitches. You're doing an amazing amount of stitching here. 
but that is not what we're going to do. We're not going to just make it a finished edge like this. The other thing is, is that it, you could, I mean, you're looking at it going, oh, I don't think that looks that bad. Why should it? That's up to you. If you love it like this and, you know, you're going to have a ton of these around it, that's, then you're done with this one and move on to the next one. But we're not. So, um, we are going to, I'm debating on just, Uh -huh. uh -uh. But I'm going to do this kind of quick and dirty, okay? I promise. And plus, you're going to get to see the whole process again and have it reinforced. Okay? Okay, we're going to make sure to stabilize. Our piece. Right? South. The fact of the matter is, is that I don't want to sew cording on one leaf, then remove it and glue that same cording on. Okay? I just, I, I don't want that. All right? Because I am sending these back to my friend who is doing, uh, taking on the Herculean task, or uh, lean task, of doing two. She's doing two. You rock, Diane, because this is definitely labor of love. This time I'm going to do the point a little differently, I think. I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked on for stable stability purposes. I'm going to make a very thin dart right there and one there let's see how we do as far as the profile we get at the point okay all right put a little tack there and here we go I'm just going to put that down like that, just in case. All right, so my interfacing decided to split away from my fabric. I don't care. I'm not going to worry about it. On a tiny spot like that, I'm not going to worry about it. Now, because I did north, south, east, west, like what I teach doing ornaments, I can kind of do a little speed chomp in here. Don't get too close to that edge of the fusible facing. Sometimes putting your fingers to the edge of where you're cutting to block cutting too deeply into the interfacing is a good way to, to do this as well. All right. Boop. Ah, cheese and crust. All right, all right, all right. I don't mind if it comes off up here. Because I can glue it back down. Why is the interfacing on there if we don't care?
care if it comes off there. The reasoning why is when we sew, not only is it easier to um, cut the darts into, but, oh, that, I got that glue on a little thick. Um, when I'm sewing the cording on, this edge will have the interfacing on it and it's just, um, it won't pull through. Uh, if you do velveteen, the reason I found out about this interfacing is because when you do velveteen, uh, the fishing line especially, uh, it shreds. It shreds to bits and it can be annoying to work with. So it's just better to have it than to not have it. Okay, down. Make sure to get that fabric pulled tight to the edge. Okay, you do not want to be able to feel a gap between the interfacing and it'll make your backing piece look even bigger than your front piece. Okay, you do not want that. Okay, I'm do here. And pull it over. Oh my goodness, I can tell that I overheated this piece of material when I was putting this interfacing on because this interfacing should not be popping off all of these tabs like this. Blow on it a little because I put a little extra glue on there that I did not intend on putting there. Right. Not too close to the edge of that stabilizer. I don't want to see any V marks like I did on the other one, right? No, no. Now you may be saying, Kelly, I really wish you would have done this one ahead of time. Yeah, well, life is crazy and I've been doing painting masters. You guys want all of these new designs? You gotta, I gotta sleep. Again, really? Okay. If you see a fuzzy dart along the edge, what do we do? Heat it up, add a little glue, press it down. Do not want to have to hide a sin when we do the Cording, we want nice thin cording. Okay, I sat there and I talked about my glasses and then I didn't put them on. Uh, why do I use a second pair of glasses? Because my doctor does not want to make my progressive lenses with such a high magnification and I tend to hold things quite close to myself so if I don't put them on I start to squint to see 
and I end up with a headache. So I just put a pair of cheaters on over the top of my regular glasses. This is for those of you who haven't seen me wear these crazy double glasses. Okay. All right. So you're almost done with two. Look at this. Almost done with two. Now what do we do now? Bring it out and around. Okay. Now I will warn you if you Maybe I should have put the disclaimer earlier than this because people might have stopped watching when I said, if you're not going to put cording on, you're done. One of the things that could happen is if you try to do the bend thing, you could see a pucker or a gap when you bend with no cording. Okay. Okay. Two done. Well, they're ready for cording. Woo! All right. Now, what do we need to do? Get ourselves a piece of monofilament. All right. And when I make a knot, I make a loop. I bring the tail through once, twice, three times. Wow, my hands look really dry on camera, but that's because they are. This glue is so not nice to your hands, and neither is the needlepoint, and the, it just sucks it all right out. Okay, if you're not sewing cording on, this is still a fabulous trick to do. I set the knot with hot glue so it doesn't pull through. And I have a piece of cording that I already have made. All right. So this is a uh, I am wetting my fingers so the hot glue does not stick to it. Uh, you would want to use a pair of pliers and put it where the two flat paddles come together in there so that you do not um, burn your fingers. That's a good trick to use. All right. And why did I just do that? Because I am about to slide this into this. I was just looking for my monofilament which is invisible so I couldn't find it. Take our needle. This is one of my lovely thin needles. It's a 20 gauge um, curved needle. Put my sundry of this on here. Now, whether you're gluing or whether you are sewing, I want you to remember something. As you take your cording around, it naturally wants to untwist. Um, and I will do a quick cording supplement video at the end of this. All right, I am going to slide this on the front side of this. See how there's a little room? Okay, on the front side of that wire. Okay, we're gonna come in. We're gonna bring our needle up and through. So I wanted to also explain to you about the whole, okay. I'm going to do it on this side then. Okay, bring it up. 
uh, the wire. Why did I do it all along the edge? I did the, oh, and I just pulled my cording out, cheese and crackers. I did the wire all the way around the edge of the interior because if you just put a piece of wire straight up, you can't get bending on both ways. And it doesn't bend if you just do a tiny loop in the center. It still does not give you that kind of movement. I mean, look at that. How lovely, right? Now, with this cord, all right, I came back up from this side. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. When I put cording on, I put it, I do it counterclockwise on because the angles when you're sewing of putting it up and in. Now, I don't need to sew the edge first because I am using the fishing line to sew this edge around, to sew around it, okay? I don't want to bring this up and block a hole, and block a hole here, okay? I want, because I'm want i gonna bring this cording up and around and I'm gonna boop it right in the back here. You're not gonna see where this cording begins and ends, but, so that's why I'm gonna stack it a little differently so I don't have to marry it or anything. So I'm bringing it through this twist here, like that. And I'm putting it into the needle point there. Okay, bringing it around. Ah, and I pulled it right out. Get back in there. This has kind of a softer edge to it, meaning these two pieces are soft, so it's deciding to be difficult. There we go. Okay. Now, we ended on the needle point side. I'm grabbing some fabric from this side. Just a little, not a lot and stay up here on the edge and why is that because otherwise you're going to be going through glue 50 times and you will kill your hands now if you're using a straight needle uh, I know my friend Robin she only uses a straight needle um, I it is what it is do not use clips to clamp these together. Not only will you scar the fabric, you'll dent your leaves and you'll see little clippy marks all the way around. I cannot stand the clips. All right, so it's on the back side here. So I'm gonna twist this over. I'm gonna find my twist here. Come, oof, up through. Okay, like so, all right. Now, I didn't say I was doing teeny tiny stitches, all right. I'm doing just enough to keep the sides together Press them with my fingers as I'm pulling on this to keep the edges nice and tight together. I'm coming back through that. I'm going to bring this fishing line like that through this twist and into the front and out through the side. It's actually oddly enough, pretty smooth. Don't pull so tight that you create tons of dents, but most people aren't going to be look at the back, looking at the back sides of your leaves. But you might see them from the side, so let's just be cautious, okay? Okay. 
there. So I'll probably have about, I don't know, six stitches on this side. Probably about eight on the big one. But the reason I'm doing the little one for sewing is pretty obvious. Because I don't want to make you guys nuts watching me stitch around. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Catching it there, coming up through the point. Now, this is an important stitch, okay? Why is that? I want to anchor this point Sometimes, see, I can see a really big piece of glue right there. So I took it out of the needle point side and I'm going to put it back in along this edge because I don't want to fight with the glue, okay? All right. through here, okay? Right through that twist, right in between. Okay. So depending on the time that you have to dedicate to stitching, if you get your leaves, oh, look at that little bugger popped right out again. If you get your leaves stitched from that grouping uh, before the next issue comes out you can sit down and get them finished right up so by the time it comes at the end of the year you'd be able you wouldn't have to sit down and just be like oh let's do these oh my gosh because you'll stop you will because it's a lot to sit and it can be very stressful on your hands if you decide that you want to do 
sewn cording on. Okay. Ah. Oh, fine. It just wants to come out that spot. It's going to come out that spot. Okay. All right. So, if you wanted to, you could use everything that you learned at the beginning just by doing the pressing trick on the fabric for the front or uh, the needlepoint on the front, you could utilize the same way doing the back and press it all over and not have to use any glue and pin it together and sew the edges and sew, 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 sew. It would be lovely. Okay. So I keep like twirling as I'm going, okay? Now, I don't like, what did that do? That cording isn't laying in a way that I like. And it could potentially Pucker right there. Okay. We're almost to the end, and we want to make sure. Okay, there we go. All right. I am going to pull this back down. And it popped out because I'm manhandling this wire up here. I'm going to pop that back in. All right. Then I'm going to bring this and lay it down. Okay. I'm going to take a piece of fishing line. At this point, I know I look like a mime, like I'm not actually doing this, right? It's like, are you sure you have fishing line in your fingers? I do. Okay. Okay, all right. Oh dear. Well, I cut that before I tied another piece on there. And I don't want this cording to unfurl. So quick lick bunny. Okay. All right. So I chose this cording because of my fabric color. Okay. Okay. 
So when I do courting, uh, if you watch my courting videos, you will see, okay, so you take your courting and you foof it and you, uh, okay, put some glue in it. Then you take your little things and you write in the flat spots and you smash it and you let it open. And why do we do this? We cut a little arrowhead on the end, okay? Like so, right? Because then it's nice and flat and you take your doll needle and you bring it around and now you have this lovely hard flat arrowhead that you can just hopefully I can put it in the hole that I left there. I know all you're seeing is like fingers and thumbs and dry skin of my hands. <laughs> oh it is like that. Where is that stitch? It's right there. So I gotta go in between. There's a stitch here and a stitch there. So I have to kind of make a little void and stuff it in there like that. There we go. There we go. Kind of pseudo marrying them together. But not totally, because if that was the case, they'd slide right in behind each other and you wouldn't see the start point on the front. Okay. All right. Now I come in, bring a stitch there. And I'm actually going to put this needle through the front, okay? Even though I really need it to go to the back so that I can secure this end. So here it is in the front. I'm actually going to go in through that twist there up to the top we're going to put a stitch right in there now can I just say that this is a pretty easy little thing to do. Now, I know it seems like longer because um, I've been doing two, but I, I think you can do this. I really do. And I think if you just keep up with it, stop laughing at me. I really think that if you just keep up with it as you go, so it doesn't seem like this Herculean task You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I have complete trust in you, your abilities. Again, stop laughing. Okay. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get to a point where I can make a knot, but I know that knot is not going to go where I just was because... I could feel that there was a lot of glue there. So I'm going to pull it through this lid, a little bit of the twist that's there. Then I hold it and I wrap it a couple times around my needle and knot. Okay? The knot pulls in nice and. Did it just go in there and knot? Or is did I just make a knot way up here? Oh dear. Let's try it again, because 
I don't think I actually made a knot down in there. I think I made a French knot in the middle of everything. Oh, you? Yep, I got one. Not quite sure how I managed that other thing. Sorry if I was just off camera. can see a little bit of fishing line there from that other knot. We always pull our bit through, our needle through, and feed a tail under the fabric or under the, into the needle point and then cut it flush. Okay, there we go. And I have to say, Pretty pleased. Pretty, pretty pleased. Look at that. You can manipulate it any way you want to once you get it on that wreath. Okay. All right, hold on. So, our sewn one is done. You're like, oh my giddy aunt, how much longer is this video? It's a lot longer. <laughs> Just kidding. So, again, cording is four strands and four strands. You're going to have to watch my other video to learn how to do that. Okay, now we're going to talk about, we're going to quickly get this glued, this cording glued on. Okay, so now we're doing the cord, the glued cording version. And what we're going to do is we're going to open this up a little bit. Okay, got it nice and open here, right? We're gonna take our Fabri-Tac all in one. Okay, just a piece of scrap. Gonna clean all the glue boogers off of it that are up in the cap. So we have a nice lovely point. We're gonna take that point and open this up. We're gonna inject a little glue in. Okay. Not a ton because we don't want the jelly squeezing out. Now I roll the bottle and I just put a little of the because it loves to leave stringers and I don't want the stringers to go across the needle point. Okay, so push your cording into where you injected your glue. All right, if you see, can you see that? Can you see the jelly, that's, that little bit of glue that's right there that's like pulsating as I, okay, take your doll needle and smear it down in between and make that little oozy bit because I put too much in there. I warned you, I warned you about it and yet I did it myself. Take a pin and I want you to go through your needle point, through that bit of cording and I want you to tack it down, but don't go through the back side of your material, okay? This is just there to hold it so we don't pull it like I just did with the one that I sewed on. Put the leaf fabric side towards you. If I'm going to have a dribble, I want to be able to deal with it on the back side, not on my stitching, okay? And you're gonna take and get a tiny, tiny bead started and you're gonna drag the bead along like so, okay? After a couple inches, stop. Take a second. Let it get tacky. I then hold it from the front 
so I can see it and just gently lay it down on the glue. I'm twisting it ever so slightly. We want to make sure that the twist looks even all the way around. Kind of give it a little squeeze. The reason less is more is if you come back and it pulls away after it's dried, just put a little bit more into, pull it away, boop, 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 inject a little bit in, put a little on the end of your needle and edge it in there, and then come back and then tack it down, sit and hold it, make it happy. Say, oh, you love your little friend. You want to stay with it. Just sit there. Yeah. You think I don't talk to things? I totally talk to things. Tell them, be nice. Behave yourself, please. Okay. For you, you're going to see where you ended and put a little tack down. Okay. Just so you know where your glue ended. And I don't want you to shove it in with your finger because what will happen is, is it will go way down in because these, we don't have it glued tight to the side and we don't want to because that means that more than likely that glue is going to be really jellied out there and it has the potential to squeeze out like the jelly or like the, um, you know, egg salad sandwich and just squishes right out. Okay, like mud through your toes. Okay, now I keep massaging this and do to do, do because I like to kind of, I don't rush this part. I want it to have a good adherence so that once it's dry, it's not going to buckle. And what do I mean by buckle? Okay. So this is a ribbon I put on the exact same way. Um, it's really hard to find trim that is the right color green, that's going to go with everything. Uh, Joanne's had two versions. This was really intense, and I thought it was just not acceptable to be next to this. You could put this in some tea and tea stain it. Yes, you take off all the ribbon and you put it down into a really uh, strong cup of tea or put it in a bunch of the tea, um, yeah, leaves. Okay, and just let it sit. Okay, that's one way you could deal with kind of dulling it down a little bit. But what the issue with this type of edge is, see how that buckled? So I need to come in and inject a little glue by, give it a second, I gotta let it, you get a little dab going there, a little drip, you grab it, you roll the needle in it, and you just kinda smear some down in there, and then you hold it tight. So, you know, it doesn't always, it's not going to always love being put on a flat piece like that. So we want to make sure that this is getting good adherence. I'm really trying to get it to adhere to the fabric side and not really come out onto my uh, needle point, okay? I'm dragging it right across. And this is acid free, waterproof. You can put it through the washing machine. Don't know how many times because we don't wash needlepoint. Talk about ruining your sizing. And also, I'm kind of going to keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing so that that edge stays nice and tight and gets good adherence. You can also do exactly what I did before and take a pin and pull the two sides together 
Okay, I just grabbed a little bit of the fabric that's a dart on the other side to keep these together. Okay, I don't put pins in or through the fabric because it'll leave a hole. And we're just going to keep on keeping on. Okay, now if for some reason you get a little too much on there, You're going to do exactly what I did at the beginning, okay? Now see this spot right here? See how open that is at the end? All right. Give me a second. If you see too much is on there, do the exact same thing I did at the beginning, but use a thinner needle so that you can literally really kind of push it down in there. Okay, I'll clean that off later. Turn it around and start laying that on. Okay, twisting. All right, and I'm just gonna, and by letting it sit for a second, it lets it get a little tacky and it doesn't, that air, and then it doesn't do the squishy jelly out that much okay it's not as prone to go and you see it on all the sides of coming out now if you see a bit of shine where the glue has squeezed out what do you do you take that pin you run it between where you see it and it'll shove it back down in so that you don't have these odd little outs okay Oof, get that out of there. Now, can I guess which way the majority of you are going to finish these leaves are? Yeah. But when you do this, I want you to do it on a spare. I want you to get some experience with it so that you're not, oh, doing one that has this crazy you know stitched and it took you forever and you just love this do one that you know and you have 56 of them by the time you're done faster okay all right take our time right and you know I'm not even, I didn't even put a pin and pull it around like I did up here to cinch those together. Sin hidden, big gap, gone. Okay, so I'm going to bring it around. It's nice and tacky. I keep massaging. Oh, you love each other. Good contact, good contact. Okay, just like that. All right, so how do I know about this glue? And so this is what I put Limoges box tops on with. And I've been using it for a very long time. So I got a little squishy that came out here. I'm running my pin and pushing that down in. So that little bubble that popped out is gone, okay? Gone, 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 gone. And I'm going to keep, because watch, if you just take this and go like this, you can literally press it down into that seam too far, okay? Don't do that. Because you want it to look the same all the way around. Now, these curvy areas, they don't like to stay down. So if you want to keep working on, get some of these one-inch pins, all right, and put it in and get it so that you know it's secure. I like to do it by 
coming back and just keep you know because I don't want these to be good pressure points and then the other ones to not be down nice and solid but they definitely need to continually make sure that you have good contact because that's where glue fails when you do not have even gluing and the cording isn't making good contact with the piece. That's a bit much. Okay. Boop. Bring it around. Uh, uh, uh. I'm getting jelly. And not the good kind of preserves. Get that pulled right down in between because obviously I've gotten too much. Now, you got to be careful. Don't lay it down and pull it back up and put it towards your needle point. Okay, don't do that. You'll get glue everywhere. Now, your other issue is if you see glue on your fabric on the back, okay, or on the fabric on your stitch piece on the front, don't touch it. If you mash it in, you will have a hard time pulling it out. But 90% of the time, you can sit there and just take your needle, doll needle, oof, I got that fishing line on there, and you can literally just pick at it after it's dry and pull it off okay but do not mash it and if you feel it on your fingers if you don't see it but you you know kind of felt as you go to move your hand until you're really good at this make sure you're not retouching okay all right All right, look at that. And done. Ba -ba. Now, I know that this is how you guys are going to do it unless you are I don't want to say this. Um some of us know that I'm maybe not in love with taking a risk of a drip. Um, plus, and, and it scares me to death when I'm doing the Limoges boxes, okay? It does. Because of the... Um, you kind of got one shot with a Limoges box. Where if you've watched my videos, you know. Had a semi-disaster and it was terrifying, but, you know, made it work. So now what do we do? We foof out and get that glue down in there. Because by doing this, okay, if for some reason the fishing line comes off, it's still glued together, okay? All right, and there. Now we're just going to take this, bring it around the back. Now this is, this is like, hey man, I'm set. Stop trying to unset the glue. It's still malleable enough, I hope, to kind of pull that apart and shove this in there. There we go. OK. 
Okay, and just like that, ta -da! done. And we know how tight that was. Now, you may want to pull this back and inject a little more in there so that it stays tight. Okay, but it's going to be right up close to the wreath. So I think you're good. All right, so I'm going to give that a second to sit. All right. So this option done the exact same way, okay? And just laying it on as I go, okay? Just that simple. So if you don't wanna do a ton of cording and you cannot find the right color, this is some cotton twisted cording, uh, ivory, 100% cotton. Uh, from Hobby Lobby, which you can order online. Okay, and uh, what you would have to do with this is you'd have to get some dye. Um, the straight green is really bright, so get like the apple green with maybe the forest green and do a little combo. Yeah, that's what you would have to do. And it's, since it's 100% cotton, um, it'll dye really well. Just do a couple of test things. Uh, the large ones take, mm, 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 yeah, nine and a half inches of cording, okay? And the small ones, uh, three and a half, so about about seven inches of cording. Okay, so you can get the way I do cording, which in, is in my basic cording video. You'll see that they um, start out as if you take a skein of this and just cut it like you were going to make just thirty-six inch strands out of it. You cut it at the one knot. And when you twist the four and four together, you will get approximately 28 and a half inches once it's twisted. So depending on, and I do it this way, I don't do a big long cord because you gotta unfurl it, watch the long cording video, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just way more time consuming, okay? But if you decide to go this route and you dye it, it's just yards and yards and yards of it, okay? Along that line, if you want to do a flat trim, they had this, um, all right? And same process, you would have to dye it, then you're going to glue it to the edge, okay? Um, this is a uh, khaki color. You also don't have to. You don't have to do it. You could, you know, put a little of that glue along the edge and press it and just take a pin and push the, any of the glue that squeezes up. But you're definitely going to want to do the trick where you put it in and press it towards it so that it has a really nice tight fitting seam all the way along it. Okay. All right. So let's let's give it a shot. Let's see how it bends. See if I really missed any integral parts. It's also probably still a little wet, but yeah. Look at that. Look at how nice that is. All right. All nice. None of these seams are popping open. See, when I pull it, everybody's staying together. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take a second and we're going to talk about how to do the wreath, uh, attaching everything. Okay. I uh, took my Cricut that I got for uh, my cutting machine that I got for making templates for round classes and I made a quick template 
something that they already had on their teardrop shape and made these sort of pseudo leaves. So this shows 56, 56 leaves. <laughs> uh, this is going to be kind of odd because of how I have uh, this set up, but I'll do my best to show you what I intend to do. So what I did is I, because we don't know how they have done the final finish on them, uh, I, okay, take a sec. I started my, when I was working my way through college, I started out as a floral designer. And I have been ever since, even as I was a finisher, I was also a floral designer working uh, for wedding florists and stores and things like that. So, um, I have a lot of, uh, mediums in my wheelhouse. <laughs> so I have all of these things that I utilize from the floral industry and ways that we put things together there. And that's where my whole motto of uh, that never show your mechanics, always hide the how you do it. Okay, you always cover up. That's how it looks professional, professionally done. You don't want to see wire from the side of what you're doing. Uh, you make sure to put leaves further down when you're doing it. So one of the things uh, in the magazine is it said it was on a 15 inch wreath face. There is no 15 inch wreath face because wreath faces frames are only available in even numbers so they either met a 16 inch wreath or a 14 inch wreath okay and um i'm erring on the side of caution so that you have a much fuller wreath and going with a 14 inch wreath now um, because I haven't seen a side view of the wreath to be able to say, oh yeah, that's what they used. Um, I decided, uh, and because visually it's very hard for the depth of field, it, it looks flatter. And so I'm guessing potentially that they sewed it onto a wire frame. Um, and the wire frame has three, usually, has three wires that run all the way around um, and little spacers throughout it. Um, I think it would be easier to utilize a foam wreath and um, if we need to, so this is actually 16 inch circle. So you can kind of see, where did I just put that? You can kind of see, how big that is. This is a 12 inch ruler, okay? Quilting ruler, my favorite. Um, but I'm concerned about the thickness, okay? Um, the 14, which is actually 13 and an eighth inch. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. Is um, two inches, it says 1.9. Had to get back on my train of thought there. Sorry about that. Train was leaving the station and I'm off track. So I thought if you use a 14 inch wreath versus the 16, then potentially what you will have is a much fuller looking wreath and you can take advantage of the wire that you put in it by being able to give it some lift 
maybe put it down a little further along the edge and not have it be too spaced out where you're going to see a lot of the underside. Now, we do not leave this foam so you can see it. Oh, of course not. No way. So you won't see it. So even if it sits away from the wall a little bit and you can see what's on the back side, it's, it's going to have a, a cover on it. Not to be spoiled yet by what we're doing. But I also have another option for you. Okay, so now that you've seen my lovely paper display, which um, I will do further on um, another video on actually assembling it, because I think you've had enough with, all, with everything you just learned. Let's just get going on the other. But I wanted you to kind of have an idea of where I'm going with this. So the reason I laid it out like this, not that I would put these colors out, but I want you to, as you're doing your leaves, that I, I want you to, you, don't start attaching them now because you're gonna have all these different leaves and you're gonna want to space them out correctly. You're going to want to be able to see how they go together, whether they show you a picture, you look at the original, uh, picture of the wreaths um, and match up where they go and they give you a chart from the magazine um, or if you're doing different colors and different fibers you definitely want to lay it out prior okay and when I'm doing floral design I and knowing that there are six of the small leaves eh, it's kind of hard for me as a floral designer. I love the odds. I love the odd numbers because, you know, it doesn't look so matchy matchy. So I personally would probably inject those smaller ones dispersed a little differently than others might. Okay. Um, so. I'm going to move the camera. Don't get nauseous. I just got to move it back over here. Give me a second. Ooh. I put sticky stuff on it. Oh, of course, then it does that. Looking at all the junk on my floor. Isn't it lovely? Oof. Okay. Oh, and look at that lamp. Isn't that a lovely lamp? Okay. Now I got to bring this up do this without having an issue. Okay, so, hold on, sorry. Should've turned, hit pause, right? Okay, so this was my thought on the wreath. I'd like to have this be thinner. And you're like, hey, wait, there's a line right there. Well, I was testing out something before I showed you this. So I'm actually going to cut the back side of this off so it's flat. Okay. I'm sorry. I've got all of this schmutz still on my board. All right. Um, now, I have a wire thing that I could, a hot wire thing that I could do, um, but the majority of you aren't going to have it. Uh, my friend Marty gave it to me. Woo, to Marty. And it's a blade that I could put through here, and it'd be nice and hot, and it would not leave little schniblets of styrofoam all over the place. I'm just not sure I can have the right control that I need to with it. So, how did I get a line all the way around perfectly. Well, I would like to thank my friend uh, Joan of uh, Hingham Square Needlepoint, who sent me a video once of how to get a um, perfect circle a quarter of an inch all the way around 
onto a template. Uh, well, it's actually to do a line for, um, you know, a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. I got it. So I had the same thought, but in a different way. Okay, so what I did is I looked, it's like, well, I don't want a full, I don't want to cut this perfectly in half, okay? I wanted it just to shave a little off the back, okay? Because then I don't have so much to cover to hide this. So what I did is I took this thread. It is... Okay, roughly just a little above an inch and a quarter. I had another uh, older, you're gonna love it. Let me see if I can grab it. This came out of my mom's uh, thread, <laughs> thread uh, stash. And it had a nice sharp edge on it. But I wanted it, this to be something that you could get that was closer because we are in a store now and this is not available. Uh, Clark's? Yeah. I think, yeah. So I grabbed this uh, Matera Rayon and I figured that this was probably a little more modern of a height. And like I said, it is one, two, three, four, five sixteenths, one and five sixteenths high. So, you know, just something over. This one is a true one and a quarter, maybe. Nope, one and an eighth. All right. So I wanted something a little bit more, but could have been an inch and a half as well, but I just didn't have any. Uh, threads that were that tall. So I settled for this. And all I did is holding it on this right here. Alright. And just pulled and pulled and pulled. Okay. Until I went all the way around getting my groove on in this styrofoam. Okay, so a nice, lovely groove. So I have a measurement, right? Then what do we do here? Woo! Same thing, okay? Reminds me of uh, what was those spirographs. Oh, I loved those things. They were so cool, making those woo, 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 back and forth we used to drink. Yeah, dating myself yet again. Okay, so now we have this nice line. Right. So now I'm going to take, ooh, that's got a lot of ugly on it. Mm, I got to find a, hold on. Okay, sorry. Didn't realize I unpaused it. All right, make sure that. Okay, I'm recording. All right, so I just had to put a fresh blade on because I forgot that I was actually going to use a blade today. So what I'm doing is I'm trying. I'm going to hold this parallel. Okay. Now, not sure that that I can do this. Nope. But in an effort. Yeah, that's still too high. I am going to attempt to keep this blade somewhat parallel. I'm not going to be too nuts about it. I'm going to do a preliminary cut. All right. Move all this. <laughs> I gotta put my glasses back on. OK. 
Okay. When I feel like it's going to kind of chunk the styrofoam, I kind of sod it. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Now, you know, I want to say that there are reed forms out there that are halvesies, but my issue with that is that they don't have it at my store, and so I don't want to say yes or no. There we go. Through. Now we're going to do the interior, same way. This might be, I'm going to try to get it on that same bottom ridge, because that kind of had a thick edge to it, that uh, thread. And I want to try to keep my blade as deep as possible, because um, I don't want to have to do a huge cut. Can you see? Okay. I definitely have less control going this way than the outside. Just because it's a little more awkward. Okay. Now, if you say, Kelly, no way am I doing that. I totally understand. You could get a smaller wreath, go down from a 14 to a 12 so that you can have another layer down below. So if you did one layer of leaves around the center, like the light green ones were in the previous shot, um, and then did another stabby row here, and so that you're literally putting one, two, three, you could end up, the smaller, if you went a little smaller, you could then have them a little closer and bring another sub-level down so that it comes down even more and hides your sides a little bit. But that's something you're going to have to play with. That's something you're going to have to kind of put them all out, see how it goes, and we'll talk about that in a second too. All right, so... I'm going to come back in all right well done I have a another knife one second okay now we can get out now, I obviously, this is all the way out, <laughs> used it for something else, but I think it's a little longer. Nope, not much. Okay. Ta-da! This is a hacksaw. You use it on metal. Let's see how we do. Let me see where my Yeah, there we go. Now this is a tiny one that they have. Most hacksaws don't look like this. I'll show you the other side. This is made by Stanley. And it has this free end of the blade. Most hacksaws have a big piece that comes from one end to the other. You know what would be great for this? Bread knife. I will warn you, this is very messy. So have your dust buster close by. At least it's not as bad as the popcorn styrofoam. Oh my gosh. 
When I do those panels, I love my hot wire cutter. So ultimately, this is running right along between those two um, cuts that I made. So I don't even have to worry about it. Ooh, look at that. Oh, look. I just broke it. I don't even have to worry that it's going off point because those initial cuts, okay, now again, you might say, Kelly, come on, I'm not doing that, then just use the full round one, I'll show you how to do it, how to cover it. around yet? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Success! Yay! Ooh. All right. Okay. Excuse me for a little, uh, shall we do product endorsement? Thank you to Joan and Marty for this little baby because love it. My little Dyson Schnivlet catcher. <gasps> So, this is what we're going to do next. And ultimately, this is going to be up to you on putting the leaves on, but I'm going to show you how I would do it, and we'll go from there. Now, I am a little concerned, because I made this bottom flat, that it's not going to go on quite as lovely as I want it to. All right? Now, I am going to put this, start this with pins, because I'm not sure the angle that I need. So we're going to cover it with ribbon, okay? And you got to give it a little angle, okay, when you're covering it. And again, so I got this ribbon at... Uh, Joanne's. They did not have it at Hobby Lobby. And you're just going to wrap it around and you want to overlap it just a little bit. So again, this is where that angle came in that I was talking to you about. There we go. There's so many different kinds of ribbon that you could utilize, but I kind of liked this because of the color that it was, and I, ooh, sorry, I hit the camera. Um, and I think that it will be um, easier to put the wire through. And I'm basically going straight around at this point, I think. The angle is now gone. But that's okay. I don't care. All right. If it changes direction, I'm going to laugh. Because that is all about it being flat on the opposite side. Okay. Ribbon to the floor at this point because it's ticking me off. Already regretting my ribbon decision of dropping it. Ugh. Yeah, I think because of that flat backside, we aren't going to get a lovely angle on this. Just not going to happen. That's okay. It doesn't have to happen. 
triangle. I just figured I'd like you do it that way on a round one without the flat back. Okay. You could use fabric on this. You could use I'm going to give you a couple options, all right? This one, the only concern that I have with it is that you can see the um, shine through. The weave of the burlap. I'm not sure that one skein or one roll will do for that, okay? So I might have go and get another one but I really thought this was pretty um, again it is feasible to use a solid like this so this is actually a lovely velveteen hmm? with a nice fun funky fuzzy edge to it and this is from uh hobby lobby okay and you don't have to worry about the weave and why is that kelly well because we are going to put pilot holes in i'm not sure i'm gonna love it with the fuzzy edge now but we'll do it we're gonna do a couple so you can kind of see all the different ways. Okay, and you just keep spinning it around and around. Okay. Totally made me think of another song. Just like this. Come on. Getting all twistified. You could use a really pretty bro brocade print if you can find one. It's just all up to how you search and what you search for. Okay. I also got this really cool yarn thinking that potentially um, you can put it around and around and around. Uh, this is really pretty greens. It doesn't really show it on the uh, camera. It makes it really blue. Um, but I also have this stripe. Might be a little too, mm. you know. And what else do I have there? I also have all right, hold on a second.
Okay, when I'm starting and finishing adding these, you should fold the ribbon under so that the end that you cut is not the out part seen so that okay here I've been doing this and I really hope that I've actually been oops I can't do it that way this ribbon has a direction and what does that mean you can see a fishing oh no it doesn't I guess you can see it on both sides Interesting. There's a little piece of clear line. Okay. I'm just going to put it down. So if you had, oh, look at that. Huh. If you had um, say a clear um, a clear oh good grief so you just got to keep overlap overlap okay if you had a nice wide Sometimes the um, thinner ribbon is going to lay on a little flatter. So if you found a nice grow grain that you liked, um, that could be really nice as well. I think ultimately so far, I definitely like that as far as the maybe the finish of it. It just depends on what your leaves look like, on what you choose for your backing. Okay, I'm going to try to finish this out, get it wrapped around, and then you can decide once you get all of these, once you get them all in, you know. I have um, done wreaths where I put, um, you, you could put sphagnum moss on it, um, that's something we use, it's like the green fluffy moth, moss, but it gets really dried out. You could put a birch bark ribbon on it, they have that look, but again, as you're wrapping it around, just know it has the potential, sorry, I need scissors. Um, this has a lot of fringy bits that are catching. Oh, running out. we make it? I don't think I can make it all the way. Oh no! So close! Alright, we ended on the back side. Okay. Alright. And then... Not gonna leave it like that, right? Come on. Nah, 
not. So ultimately, I would just use some, uh, I don't know, would I use pins? Would I use glue? Would I sew it? Yeah, I'd sew it. That's what I would do. Put a couple stitches in this so that I didn't take a chance that over time it would get stupid. Okay. And I'd probably put the meat where they, these come together at the top. And then you're going to need to put a little hanger here. Uh, we usually did those um, I would take, so this is some of that 18 gauge wire, and I fold it in half like this, <clears throat> what did I do with my doll needle? Now I've pushed off everything off all over the place, do you think I'm going to be able to find what I want? I would do it, put a hole like this at an angle, okay? And like this, yeah. Right, find the hole again, Kelly. that up, fold that up, like this, okay, and I want you to bring this. If you do this with the um, thinner wire that you have, you definitely have to put a pilot hole in, you won't be able to push it like I just did. This is that heavier gauge that I decided to not use in there. Okay, and I am twisting it around like this because I am crazy old florist that uh, had to make it so that a 80 pound <laughs> wreath would hang from uh, that had like wet oasis in it because it was going to a memorial service or something. So this is how we used to do it. We put it all the way down through so it had plenty of support. Okay. And you can kind of bury it in there. Like I said, your leaves are going to cover it. If you want to, you can sew something on the back instead. Okay, but this is definitely how I would do it. Fork it down through. Bob's your uncle done. Okay, so now we have all of these funky, funky ribbons. And you can kind of decide how craftsy you want the look to be, how finished, how shiny, how matte, all up to you on the ribbon you use, okay? So, you have decided you know what leaf you want where, right? Well, maybe not, okay? So you're going to have, this one was really short. I wouldn't ever leave it this short again. <laughs> it 
It was ridiculous. Um, but what I would do is to decide how to put them all on, I would start with pinning them on, okay? And try to just get it through the needle point, okay? Like this. Now, if you didn't put wire in it, this is basically how you're going to adhere them on and then put a stitch. You're gonna stitch it on there, okay? If I was you and I didn't use wire, I would consider, no, I wouldn't. I'd do it just like that. And I'd put a stitch and just make sure you have something like this wrapped around your wreath so that you can adhere it on in the angle that you want. And I would pin it on in the angle that you want, okay? Same thing. Just go around and figure out, and I would, you know, here, 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 okay? You're going to plan this all out, all right? So this, now when you actually go to put these in, I want you to do what, like what we just did a minute ago. Pilot hole, okay? And in, okay? Boom, ready? Little twist, little push. Mm. Doesn't look very pretty how I just did it, but you have that, okay? And then we have one that kind of goes like that. Whatever, I don't know. Okay, so they're very dimensional, right? Then you come in and you have, of course, this goober. He's got the really heavy wire on him. Where'd my, here we go. Okay. Doot. Okay. I still would like to see you. Okay. I would still like to see you. Um, you, you have to plan it out. You have to figure out where you want to work where. And I want you, to, when you're putting this all together and laying it all out, look at it from the side. How does it look from the side? How does it look from here? Do I want to move this down a level and have it down? I totally didn't put a pilot hole. I'm trying to cram it in and it's like, yeah, no, I'm all set. Okay. Remember where you put the pilot hole. Okay. I honestly feel like you need to put a stitch in there. Okay. And to tack it on to the form because over time they'll start dropping out if you do not secure them somehow. Actually, this should go down here. Okay. Okay, like so. And then anytime we're going through this ribbon that doesn't, that's a solid, you're putting in an angle. Okay, coming back, fill the hole. If you don't like where you put it, come back and kind of stab around the material and it'll make, I'll give it a good rub and it'll make that hole disappear. Hmm. So, I'll put this there. Okay. All right. Again, you have to layer these on. The way you think, I'll do it this way, they will look good, okay? And you're just going 
to keep going around, 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 around. But you've planned them out like I did over here, okay? Like I said, put your pie, these, it's a different wire so I can sit here and do this, okay? You plan it out, you know that this one goes an inch away. It goes uh, this away. Okay, so you can just keep coming along and putting them in. All right, and all right, all right, okay, and eventually you'll get. a little split here at the end. He doesn't want to go in. And since I'm not stitching these, I don't have leaves to go all the way around. I'm sure Diane would love it if I would do one up. Okay, where's my needle? It won't go in where I want it to go in. Okay. Okay. So when you're putting them on, you're angling them all back, you're overlapping them, you're bringing them in, you're bringing them out, right? Right. Okay? So now you kind of get an idea of how you actually can finish it. And like I said, put a stitch in to be able to make sure that it stays there where you want it, right? Okay. All right, well, for now, this is your class on how I would tackle the finishing and everything else. on doing the cording. If you have any questions, please contact me anytime. I will be teaching uh, these at a variety, I uh, just totally fell over, at a variety of different stores uh, throughout this year. And so feel free to join me. Uh, love to see any of you that would like to come. And I will be posting a new list, updated list, of all the classes that I have scheduled this year. Um, I really, I hope this helps you all um, kind of figure out uh, or see that you can do this. You know, this is a doable project. You just, you need to keep on top of getting them done when you can because you don't want to get caught at the end of the year with 56 of them. But, um, you know what? Even if you do get caught at the end of the year with it, if I hadn't done two of them at once, you would have seen that doing the gluing method or the sewing method, half hour, 45 minutes, they're small, they're small. So it's not like trying to do a round ornament that way. And, you know, in the beginning I said, you know, don't make the, th the inserts ahead of time. Don't, because it's just as easy <laughs> and around. And by the time you're done with this, it is going to be fabulous and you are going to love it that you accomplished this, that you finished it for yourself. And don't forget to stitch these on. Just a quick onesie, twosie at the bottom. Please, 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 please. Um, I don't, oh, I don't advise gluing them in because uh, styrofoam inherently 
likes to melt with this glue because it has some alcohol in it um, or a uh, you can thin this with thinner so it has an additive that that's why it's kind of stinky glue um, and so it'll make the styrofoam the plastic melt and hot glue same thing so for this kind of wreath you're definitely going to want to put a stitch as you're adding them on once you get them all pinned on and put in go ahead and just put a stitch and you can just lay them out in a strip so that you know how big it will end up being uh what else did i want to say i had something else i wanted to, i was thinking of mm. oh if you only get halfway done oh i know what it was if you only get halfway done you could do a crescent display okay and then leave the wreath with the pretty fabric or whatever you end up doing and like a little birdie nest or something on the other side we used to do non-full wreaths all the time in uh, the floors there's a lot of other different types of wreaths uh, grapevine things like that if you choose to do a grapevine wreath um, the straw wreaths I don't love them because they disintegrate over time they are they do not last as long so any of those uh, more organic wreaths that you might want to put these on uh, you're going to have to sew them on somehow figure out a way to attach them uh, you could use a piece of uh, clear fishing line you could use a longer piece of wire could do that as well um, we also mm, uh, we also used to take uh, like just like twigs and twist the wire on to a stick that is from that's from nature <laughs> um, we used to use uh, like stems from salal leaves which is what these actually are the shape of they're called lemon leaves and we would take the st stems off the bottom and we would twist the wire around them and shove them down in to the grapevine wreaths and things like that and they just kind of would interweave as you poke them in okay thank you so much i really hope that you feel confident enough to do this i know you can do it if you feel like you need backup you just need to reach out to me and i will help you if you want to do a zoom class with me one-on-one -on -one, something like that because you're just not getting it or you just feel like you need that backup just get in touch with me all right good luck and uh, let the fury of the leaf finishing begin take care